Hey, hi there, it's Don McLean. Uh, the great uh, people at Time Life have asked me to uh, make some comments on each of the 11 albums that they're going to be uh, putting on every streaming platform uh, there is today and tomorrow, I guess. Um, there'll be 173 tracks and they want to know, uh, they want you folks to know, I should say, they want you folks to know a little bit about these albums. I'm gonna go randomly, not in order of when they were done. And um, I'll start with the greatest hits live. That was originally called Dominion. And that was done at the end of a 25 city uh, United Kingdom bus tour, which um, had a full orchestra. I think there were like 18 or 20 people in the orchestra. And we taped every night. And uh, the last night they did a video and um, this album. So I'm sure the video will be found and will turn up on, uh, on my YouTube channel. Time Life has also opened a YouTube, Don McLean YouTube channel. So that's the story of uh, The Greatest Hits Live, originally called Dominion. Then uh, there is a children's album called You've Got to Share. And that is an album, the title song was written by my daughter when she was nine years old. And I did the whole album with both of my children when they were little tykes. Uh, they contributed songs to the project. And we did all the three-part harmonies. There are a lot of interesting songs on there that they brought to me and uh, but that's for children you know say under the age of 10 this is back in the old days when uh, children had a childhood before um, technology got hold of them the minute they were born but um, this kind of an album is something that i always like to do then there are two albums uh, from nashville recorded with larry butler uh, Chain Lightning in 1978, and Believers, I think, was 1981. I'm not sure. Uh, the Chain Lightning album uh, contained the hit Crying, which was the Roy Orbison song, and another uh, song that I love a lot called Since I Don't Have You. They were both on the charts. And the album came out in 1978, and uh, I did not have a record company in the United States um, for reasons I'll discuss later. I had a falling out with Clive Davis. So um, what happened was that for about two years, the album languished, and then all of a sudden, um, the EMI in uh, um, Holland began to play the song Crying on the radio, and it went to number one and then went to number one in England and all over the UK, and then went to number one in Australia, and a record company called Millennium Records um, bought the master and it became number five in the United States, and I was uh, back in business in a big way in the early 1980s because of that record. Uh, that was made with the great Larry Butler in Nashville, and all the players were some of the greatest side man and recording artist in the history of Nashville, Bob Moore on bass, the Jordan Ayers singing backup voices, Pete Drake on steel guitar, um, and Ray Edenton on the acoustic guitar, and so on. So we brought those same guys in back in 1981, and we did another album called Believers. And this album was after I had been overseas in Jerusalem and in Israel for off and on for about two years, and there were a number of uh, songs that influenced that record. The title song, Believers, a song about the seaman, who was actually a person that I knew there, and the song Jerusalem were all included in that record. And uh, of course, we re-recorded Castles in the Air, and that became a top 10 record uh, for the first time. Larry Butler loved that song, and he really wanted to get his hands on that one, so it turned out great. Um, then we have an album called uh, Don McLean Sings Marty Robbins, 
uh, I don't remember the exact date of that. It probably was in the 90s sometime. But uh, I fell in love with the Marty Robbins uh, music. Again, I'd always loved him, but started to uh, look at his television shows and TV appearances. And uh, I found just a whole bunch of songs that I wanted to record and arrange them myself and, uh, and did them on this record. The cover of the album is done by a very famous artist uh, named Thomas B. Allen, who was a friend of mine for about 30 years, and he's well known in the country music for doing the Flat and Scruggs album covers throughout the 60s uh, on Columbia Records and many other artists on Columbia also. Then there was a rather strange album called Prime Time. Prime Time was the thing that got me in a lot of hot water with Clive Davis, who signed me, uh, and he didn't like the record at all. And so I was without a record company in 1979, uh, uh, and the second album for him would have been Chain Lightning, which had those hits on it. He just didn't wait around and let me do my thing. But the album uh, I always found to be very good. I, I like the song Primetime because it's about America as a game show. Uh, and you can find that, you know, the, all the songs will be on there. Two of those songs, The Wrong Thing to Do and When a Good Thing Goes Bad, were many, many years later used by the very successful rapper named Drake for a song that he did called Do It Wrong. And so Drake and I ended up being co-writers of a multi-platinum hit single called Do It Wrong uh, because he used the two of my songs from this rather obscure album. Um, there's another album here called Addicted to Black which uh, is a, an album produced in Nashville pretty recently in the last seven or eight years, I guess, maybe more. When you're my age, everything seems recent. Um, it was done by uh, Mike Seavers, was the producer. He and his brother, Pat Seavers, are good friends of mine. And um, these are all new songs. And there's one particular song on here called Run, Diana, Run about the death of Diana Spencer, which I think is a worthy song uh, to be on the radio, uh, considering the way the press in England uh, hounded that uh, poor lady to death. So that's that story. Then there's another song, another album here, uh, which is called Rearview Mirror. And Rearview Mirror is a song that I did with my dear friend, Joel Dorn. Joel Dorn produced the single Killing Me Softly and did all the early Roberta Flack albums. Uh, he discovered Roberta Flack uh, in a club in Washington and brought her to the attention of um, Atlantic Records, Ahmet Erdogan. And with the, uh, he took her in the studio and made the first three albums, which are the classic albums that really define the Roberta Flack sound. They're gorgeous albums. He made things in a handmade way. He was a very wonderful friend to an artist and a friend to a song. And he was my friend and I really miss him a lot. And we got back together again because we did an album called Homeless Brother uh, in the 70s and we lost touch. We got back together uh, near the end of his life and he, Put this rearview mirror album together it is a compilation but it has mostly unreleased tracks from my uh, garage where i had lots of 24 four track tapes you know he kept bothering me so don't you have any tapes or something i said no i don't have anything and then finally well actually i do i had a truckload of 24 track tapes that went to nashville and were all digitized so it was because of him um then there's a, uh, an album called The Western Album. It features uh, on the front a collage that I made. It's actually only half of the collage. I love Western movies and Western songs. And Doug Green of The Riders in the Sky wrote some very nice notes for me. And I did some of my favorite tunes with the Jordanaires. 
and some of my buddies in Nashville. And there's some nice tracks on here. Blue Prairie and Spurs the Jingle Jangle Jingle. Uh, these songs are wonderful. And we need to get more of the Western feel and the cowboy feel back into our lives. Um, and finally, there is a, a compilation of two Christmas albums. It's almost 20 tracks on here called Christmas Time. And that has every track I've ever done of Christmas music. It only has one original song by me, but all the rest are these wonderful standards that I love singing. And so there are all sorts of songs on here. Um, you know, Santa Claus is Coming to Town and uh, Blue Christmas and um, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, White Christmas, um, all done with a big choral background and some great, uh, great uh, players in Nashville. We had a wonderful time making this record uh, around 1990, I guess it was. So I think that covers everything. And um, I hope you enjoy these records. And there will be selected tracks taken from them and put on my new YouTube site. God bless you and uh, take care of yourselves. And we'll be seeing you soon on the road.